Alice, she's not other women. This shoplifter is absolutely gorgeous. Look at my Twitter. I've seen the she shoplifter. She is like she, but there's a few pictures of her. She is stunning. I say this is somebody. I mean, okay. What? No. There's it, lots of beautiful women in the world. Some of them are shoplifters. They should. What do you want? So this is my idea: is that they should have her in there as an ad for the store. That look at the kind of people who take from here. Beautiful women like this. It would be a good ad. She's having worked a lot of retail and dealt with the people who shoplift. They're not generally doing their personal shopping. They're usually either... Doesn't, don't take the fun of this. doesn't matter. No, unless. they're usually either involved in organized crime. Even hotter, okay. <laughs> or, or they're on a lot of drugs. She's not. She is just I don't beautiful. know how what you know that there woman. are beautiful women who do drugs, too. No, Some no. of the women that used to come into Faneuil Hall had clearly once been very lovely, but, like, once you got She's close, not on meth. The teeth and the eye teeth look good. contact good. or, like, they're out. I mean, like, I've dealt with shoplifters. It Wow. Such jealousy. Wow. It's not jealousy. I mean, it's different. So, there's also... And I grew up in Lexington, and there was also, a, you know, a rash of rich kids who would just steal for kicks, who for fun would steal from the stores in the downtown. I would never do something like that because, not because I'm like a good person, although I try to be, but not, that's like, I'm not too good a person to steal, but um, I'd be way too scared of getting caught. I would be i'm like afraid of authority so <laughs> i would not want to and i look guilty whenever i'm doing something wrong so so um golden bear says just walks right out of the front door without a care in the world ryan says he uses his last name this is on Newsbreak. Mm -hmm. she's hot i would have bought that stuff for her lol to what's jc lazy says simp no, mostly Frank they're trying says to... should be easy to find her. Yes, that's right. Usually they get like designer clothes or other stuff that's easy to fence. Like, it, I mean, we dealt with it a ton in Vaniel Hall with like the licensed sports merchandise and stuff. They wanted like steal Red Sox and Celtic stuff to sell to people on the street corner so they can have money to buy drugs or they're part of organized crime and they like make money that way or both. I don't know. She is but not part of organized used crime. To be, I will um, not have you here deriding her. There used to be when I worked at Macy's, there was a huge scam that people got caught for that was like this organized crime scam where um and, like, people who worked in the store were involved. It was a huge thing. But where they would buy stuff with, like, um, you know, fancy designer labels. Yeah. And then take the labels out and, like, sew it into other things and return it. Like, sew right. it into other cheap stuff. And, like, then return that. Do you know what I mean? So they're returning, like, cheap merchandise that has nothing to do with being from the store. But it'll, like scan and look like it has the right label on it and stuff and then they can like sell the fancy designer merchandise you know? <laughs> so i mean <clears throat> all kinds of scams out there but yeah it's it's generally i mean there's rich kids that do damn they, it the types of shoplifter what's wrong southington police due to the assistance of the public you rats the female in the attached photographs has been positively identified, and an arrest warrant is being submitted to the court. You filthy rats. She's pretty recognizable, I would assume. I no? can't believe it. I'd rat her out. N yeah, of course you would, because you're a jealous rat. <laughs> Ryan Soretsi says, if anyone knows her name, don't tell the police. Tell me instead I need her in my life more than they do. <laughs> Uh, Eric, uh, Michael Wardarski says, I can fix her. <laughs> the eyebrows alone tell me she's got problems. You leave her alone, Alice. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I know, people ratted her out. It's sad. It's very sad. But yeah, that's, I guess, like the three types of shoplifters that I know of. Organized crime. Rich kids doing it for a thrill and people on drugs. That's what I'm aware of. 
Olivia and Colmar says snitches get. You're right, Olivia. Correct. <laughs> it's probably her. <laughs> no, this is a sad day for America when a woman, a young entrepreneur, goes out. Uh huh. To try to try to make a difference in the world, identified. And now the entire state knows. Please should do this more often. It's not. Please should not be doing this more often. That's tough. She smiled on the camera on the way out. Of course she did, because she's got charisma. This is terrible. And she goes to TJ Maxx. Oh, this is sad. Okay, let me move along here. This is sad. So I'm going to move on to one of my new favorite people, Alice. Okay. And I don't like this sh shit-eating grin you have in your face because you're happy that this happened to somebody I happen to have been dating. I like when bad guys get caught. Makes me happy. I miss no, law you like and it order when my girls here. get caught. You love when when Paige Spiranak left me yesterday, and now mm -hmm. you love. I didn't like that. Yes. Yeah, no, I'm but Team you... Paige in the Paige, uh, Tom Shattuck, Paige Spiranak, Tom Shattuck feud. I am Team Paige. It is. You are shameful. Shameful. You should be on my side in this stuff. Nope. I know, weasel. <laughs> so this guy, uh, Justin Pearson. I like Paige more than you, and I don't even know much about her. <laughs> Just guy, Justin Pearson, who is um, who is this dude, uh, this assemblyman or legislator or whatever in Tennessee, who's like got all these expectations like going, this guy here. The government decided that my savior Jesus a man that was innocent of all crimes except fighting for the poor, fighting for the marginalized, fighting for the LGBTQ community, fighting for those who are single mothers, fighting for those who are... Justin J. Pierce. Okay, so we know that he didn't do quite uh, that. Here's Justin Pearson. He's rolling today since he's been bumped back into the, to the legislature. He is mm -hmm. rolling today. Listen to this. I don't think, now he's stolen everybody's accent everywhere. To the well. yeah. I believe, I believe it is a vision yeah. of people who've been ostracized yeah. coming to the well. Yeah. See, I see white folk and black folk. I see queer folk and straight folk. I see rich folk and poor folk. guy's like doing full like the preacher on coming to america this is like he's every every um like lampoon version of not only mlk and and like from the distinguished gentleman and um and malcolm x but every ple preacher in a baptist church this dude is just he's absolutely full of it and but i like him it's all Play acting, the same way, you know, being. It's this movement right yeah. now. that's going to change this country. Yeah. It's this movement yeah. in this moment in time yeah. that's going to change the country. Yeah. Might as well. <laughs> Might as well. You know, and it's funny. He's got the dudes behind him in sunglasses, mm -hmm. which is like so um, uh, honorable Elijah Muhammad kind of BS Farrakhan mm -hmm. stuff. It's BS. So this is him. A few. This is him just in 2016, seven years ago, on a. Um, uh, he's a middle class kid, black college student in 2016. Hey everybody, I'm Justin J. Pearson, and I'm running for president of BSG. There are a few reasons that we're running this campaign this year. One has to do with representation. How can we represent all voices in a conversation? I wanted to do this. So I think. I'm so glad! Oh, I'm so glad! So here's the thing. With so that, black people are gonna say it's like code switching. He has to put on the act of like being the not Martin Luther King guy to like impress white people because they'll judge him. Alice. And then they would say like, "See, look how you're judging him now for black affect." So that you what? know, I'm saying like that's what they would say. I'm devil's advocating. You. Okay, you know what he's doing? He's effing around is what he's doing. He's Dylan Mulvaney. <laughs> he is Dylan Mulvaney. Yes, I'm glad. Oh, I'm glad. Yes, I'm glad. I'm so glad. By partnering with organizations from the Boone Democrats to the Boone Republicans. Well, there you go. There you go. 
Yeah, I mean, and that's why the Republicans shouldn't, like, let's kick out the New York guy, George Santos. Is that his name? Right, of course. Like, because all these politicians are all liars about who they are and what they believe all the way down, top Alice, to bottom. I don't want to mention other women because I know that I'm not supposed to. <laughs> okay, go ahead. But you are having a very resembling night resembling resemblance filled <laughs> night <laughs> to whom of the girl who also has um also has um what's that called what are what are your th- your teeth snaggle teeth snaggle teeth the girl from firefly oh jewel state yes <laughs> You ever you are very jewel state today, Alice. Am I? I don't know yes. about that. I don't think so. Uh, it, yes. Okay. All right. I'll try to. Maybe I should go back on medication. <laughs> <laughs> Pluses and minuses to you being on medication. I don't know. Another thing we had was, um, do you remember Tiffany Dover? She was this uh, nurse who a couple years ago during COVID. Took the vaccine. One of the first yes, the I did. I read a story about her coming for, but I saw you had some video. I had few it. Americans know what it's like to be the target of a conspiracy theory. But since the day nurse Tiffany Dover fainted while getting her covid vaccine, life has never been the same. And tonight she's speaking out for the first time in an exclusive interview with NBC's Brandy Zadrozny. Tiffany Dover wants the world to know one thing. My message is simple. It is that I am alive. Everything okay over there? I'm well. That's it. I hope they believe it. They are the massive online community of conspiracy theorists who've been convinced she's dead for more than two years. I do know people who think she's a body double now. Okay, that's fine. But the thing is, is that she passed out after getting the vaccine. So that's really what they're doing is they're making they're making the most extreme case of of people around her rather than people just saying huh that's interesting why is she passing out with the vaccine this is like M- msnbc just trying to erase the valid uh curiosity that people have as to why this nurse took a hit. yeah and they could have just had her come forward immediately when it happened and say i can't believe i fainted on tv i feel silly i didn't eat enough lunch or whatever it is that she's saying now right, right? rather than Like, she went into hiding for, like, two years. I made a whole podcast about it. Tiffany wasn't ready to share her story then, but now... I'm ready to just put my story out there, own my story. That story begins in 2020. Tiffany was working as a nurse manager at CHI Memorial Hospital in Chattanooga, putting in grueling hours on a COVID unit. When vaccines arrived that December, Tiffany became one of the first people at her hospital to get the shot. I felt okay during that. Then she stood up to answer questions. I'm sorry. Oh, she's listening and then she finally thinks I had her. Whoa. I ended up passing out. So that created the opposite effect of what I would have liked. But you got right back up. I did. And this is something that's happened to me my whole life. I do have episodes where I pass out. But in that moment, a conspiracy theory was born. People thought that I was dead. People thought that I was an actress paid to do this, that I was paid off by Big Farm. It was completely overwhelming, to be honest. It snowballed fast. I had people showing up at my house. I had people reaching out to my friends, my family. I even received death threats. Were you afraid for your family? Absolutely. Yes. Through it all, Tiffany kept silent, and that only made the online frenzy worse. Why not come out and dispel these rumors? Initially, that was exactly what I wanted to do. And unfortunately, I was told that that absolutely would not happen. The hospital told you not to speak out? Correct. Yes. It would be irrecoverable damage, is what I was told, if I was to speak out and have another episode. Instead, the hospital put out this video, intending to show she was alive, but the so-called Tiffany truthers picked it apart. The lead here is that the hospital told her to shut up because they wanted to push everybody into vaccines. That's the real lead. Right. And that this other stuff is just BS. You know, make it about the guy with the antlers. Make it about the guy with the antlers. It's like, 
Totally BS. No time for that. Also, I like Tiffany better as a um, I like Tiffany better as a um, brunette. All right, Jake Tapper is on. Um, I, I don't know why, but it's it, it, well, I do know why. There's new management at CNN, so they're doing some news here. Here's my man Tap. Newly uncovered material from House Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries, Democrat of New York, contradicts his repeated previous denials that he was only vaguely aware that his uncle in the 1990s was spreading anti-Semitic filth. Uh, Leonard Jeffries uh, is his uncle. He was then a college professor at City University of New York, and he was facing backlash for falsely blaming, quote, rich Jews for financing the slave trade and for saying that Jews in Hollywood were engaged in a conspiracy to denigrate black people in film. So this is a big story back in the 80s. Um, Jeffries has said in the past that since he was in college and it was the pre-internet era and his parents hid the controversy from both him and his brother that he did not know much about the uproar. But CNN's K-File found that Jeffries was more than well aware of the controversy surrounding his uncle. He wrote a college editorial in his college paper supporting his uncle, inviting his uncle to speak on campus amid this furor. And he also defended noted bigot Louis Farrakhan from the Nation of Islam. Ooh, Andrew Kaczynski of the today. CNN's K-File team joins us now. Andrew, tell us what you found. Yeah, that's right. So Jeffries uh, and the Black Student Union uh, invited his uncle to speak on campus following uh, the controversy. After this was protested by Jewish student groups, Jeffries actually led a press conference uh, defending his uncle on campus, and he wrote an editorial in which he defended him uh, and Louis Farrakhan, writing, uh, Dr. Leonard Jeffries and Minister Louis Farrakhan have come under intense fire. Where do you think their interests lie? Dr. Jeffries has challenged the existing white supremacist educational system and long-standing long -standing distortion of history. His reward has been a media lynching complete with character assassination and inflammatory, erroneous accusations. There we go. Uh, yeah. So a few takeaways from this. Mm -hmm. One is, uh, once again, Republicans, you don't have to get rid of or disavow George Santos. Right. <laughs> because all these people are full of it. If he's been going around saying he had no idea his uncle even said these things, no clue. Ooh, I don't. It doesn't ring a bell. <laughs> and he, like, wrote editorials about it and gave speeches and stuff. I mean, really? Like, that's pretty bad. But anyway, right. um, so that's one takeaway. The second takeaway is, yes, when you make a thing out of uh, identifying everybody by their ethnic groups and deciding that ethnic groups that are doing better than other ethnic groups must be doing it because they're oppressing people, that there's a very straight line from that to blaming Jewish people for things. Right. Because Jewish people do tend to do well in this country and in a lot of countries, you know. I don't it, notice differences among people. I mean, I, I think that there's, you know, a, I think there are a lot of very successful Jewish people. So if you're going to start lumping people into identity groups and saying which identity groups are doing well and, aha, these ones that are doing well must have got one over on me somehow. Like, <laughs> then, you know, it's not hard to make a leap to see how people end up in anti-Semitism from that. I mean, multiple kinds of people, white identitarians and black identitarians, both settle on this as a conspiracy theory because they they have the same ideology they have the ideology that people are part of an ethnic group primarily mm -hmm. and that the success or not success of you is based on the success or not success of your ethnic group is tied to the fortunes of your ethnic group right right so if you go around in life with that philosophy which people on the left share now which is a, a widespread philosophy on the left uh, and they share it with white supremacists and Nazis and other people like that, then you're going to end up in that place because that's where that path leads you to. Absolutely. And that's not an ideology I espouse, to be clear. But, I mean, there's a reason why people who start from that ideological starting point end up disliking Jewish people. They're, I mean, like, that's why they end up in the same place, the racists on the left and the racists on the right. They all... They all end up with the same basic philosophy. Well, we, yeah, exactly. And, I mean, there's more history to it as well. And But the, it's an easy scapegoat. Mm -hmm. You know, historically, um, in Christians, I don't believe, were allowed to <clears throat> uh, 
um, or, or Catholics or both. Uh, Usury lend, was outlawed by the church. So usury, lend at interest money. rates, yeah, for profit. Right. So yeah. then they would grab Jewish people and say, you're in charge of this. And then so they didn't even have to grab them. It was like a vacuum, a business vacuum left by it being outlawed by the church. So, you know, uh, that was one thing. Um, you know, there's even um, like Islam also outlaws even like borrowing at interest rates. So banks have to like make special loans for like very devout Muslims that they don't call it like interest where it's like you're borrowing a bigger amount. Do you know what I mean? Like they have to call the whole loan something different so that, you know, so that they're not like borrowing at interest because that's considered like not allowed in certain forms of Islam. So, but anyway, I mean, yeah, there's there's historical reasons that this stuff arises. Um, Wait, why are you saying all right in that tone? I was going to run some more stuff by you. Well, I have one more takeaway from the Hakeem Jeffries thing. Oh, go ahead. ahead. Which is, uh, does that mean that it's going to be Catherine Clark's moment soon? Ooh, there's no way. No. I think he gets more intersectional points than she does. You think? I mean, if he gets in trouble for anti-Semitism, though. Yeah, Mm. it's tough. I don't know. Imagine that. Hmm. I don't know. Or maybe come vote time is when that happens. Yeah, I don't know when that happens. But, um, yeah, definitely food for thought because Catherine Clark is, like, one to keep an eye on mm-hmm. for sure. Uh, in other political news, lots of movement in the presidential race. First of all, lots of rumors, although I don't see anything substantiated from, like, a real news source that Joe Manchin could that run as been, a third been the party. New York Times, I think. It's, it's everywhere. I mean, but who's saying it? Like, where is it coming from? I don't know, but I think I don't think that, that the is he Times saying would... he's considering it or who? I mean, like, I don't it, get somebody it. Somebody leaked it, obviously. I don't know. There's yeah, there's lots of rumors floating around about Joe Manchin potentially running as a third party candidate. Right. So, who does that help? Well, let's talk about that. This is him last. What is today, the 11th, 12th? This is him ten days ago on Meet the Press. What we agreed on, the president and I agreed on, that what this bill would do. It would give us energy security. It would bring manufacturing back to America as quickly as possible. We would not be relying on foreign supply chain such as China to run our transportation mode. We talked about all of that. We would pay down debt for the first time in 20 years. We talked about all of that. We agreed exactly that's what it should do. And now to have different parts of his administration basically administering it and writing rules and regulation Mm -hmm. that are totally foreign to what we did is wrong. And I'm going to fight that. You need to speak truth to power, but basically hold people accountable. Right. And I'm hopeful that the president will step forward and tell his administration, we will follow the law. We will do what the bill was right. intended to do. So, well, we so there's ostensibly uh, that's the that was his moment, right? That's what he's saying. That's the moment he his eyes were opened. The, it was mm-hmm. the inciting incident. <clears throat> So my feeling on this is, what, who does this help? Oh, no, the Democrats passed a bill, and it turns out they used it for a bunch of stuff they d- didn't say it was for. Very strange that Washington, well, no, D.C. would work that, that way. But that shows him that he doesn't want to do cynical D.C. politics. Mm-hmm. He wants to be fiscally responsible, but still have a strong, all of the above, energy policy, have consideration for mm-hmm. the environment, the climate, etc. But... I think that what it does in this stance is, hey, guys, look at this whole game. I'm the down-to-earth one. Some people on the left hate me. Some people on the right hate me. I got people in kayaks around my houseboat all the time because I'm not going along to get along as a Democrat. I believe. He also, by the way, has big-time funding from that same guy who pals around with Clarence Thomas. Oh, does he? I don't think (laughs) that'll that'll matter. Um, I mean. But, I mean, I think think that it's worth, might as well. You know, if if maybe there could be an organic populist um, um, energy behind him because he's the different candidate. And he's not, I mean, like wild and crazy like Trump is. All well, the right. Time. And, and he's not, he hasn't lost his mind in, in cynical like Biden is. Right. So, I mean. If anything, but I mean, you know do you think so? Is? Say it's you know Trump Biden, which I think right now is the most likely. Yes. Two, two nominees yep. from the major parties. 
who does Manchin peel off more votes from? Because I could see him pulling votes from both, honestly, from both Trump and yes, Biden. Yes. Although I feel like more from Trump, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't think so. Uh, I don't think so. I mean, well, well you, you actually, maybe you're right. Well, well, actually, it's funny you say that, Alice. Because I feel like be- Trump has already pulled a lot of the non-college away from the Democratic Party, and the Democrats have just run up the scores in well, the cities and with suburbanites, which isn't who Joe Manchin appeals to Everybody either. in West Virginia, West Virginia will vote for Trump. Um, but you know yeah, what Manchin's this does? Yeah, Manchin's been having this rough makes polling a weird, for Senate in West Virginia. What this Virginia. does is possibly, although I don't know if enough people know who he is, but those voters who went from Obama to Trump to Biden, mm-hmm. those – that's his soft spot, right? So if he right. sucks away from them – because, you know, the election was only won by, what, 100,000 votes or whatever, really, right. when it comes down to it? Then, I mean, that that shakes up everything. So what does that do? And it, does that does that put – well, actually, he'd be in the Democratic primary, though, so he wouldn't get – No, he's not going – he's, oh, he's running independent. third I'm party. Sorry. I'm right. sorry. You're right. Yeah. Oh, so – so it's so interesting because, in a way, he doesn't have to. He can skip the whole primary. Yes, it's, he, you know who he's kind of like. He's kind of like Pence, where he's. I mean, obviously, uh, I, I don't. Democrats don't like Pence, but Pence is having it both ways and very sober. And yes, I'm MAGA because I was right there, and the things we got done together in January six was an awful day. So, mm-hmm. well, right. He. It's funny because Joe Manchin kind of represents the things that people like about Biden, the like infrastructure and the blue dog Democrat kind of Democrat. And he's also the things a lot of people like about Trump appeal to the working class represents the forgotten people. Like, I definitely think that that that's like right where his sweet spot is in terms of the voters. But he also gets a lot of hate from people, too. So it's hard to tell. But mostly he's been having rough polling for West Virginia for 2024, where he's up again uh, in terms of his approval rating because he worked with Biden and the people in West Virginia really don't like Biden. Right, and he and he screwed Mansion, like he was just saying. He mm-hmm. screwed him. He screwed him actually at the beginning. They Schumer screwed, screwed them him in too. a few different ways. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting scenario. It's unclear to me who it will ultimately end up helping more. My feeling is that it hurts Trump more, though. Like my gut reaction is that that the like college educated voters, the urban voters, the suburbanites. You know, the suburban white wine drinking women that they're so in for the Democratic Party at this point that I think he's going to peel away more of those white working class from Trump than not. Because I think a lot of the white working class already left the Democratic Party. Yeah. Although, you know what? I mean, but at the same time, don't those white working class voters want a fighter? And is this guy a fighter compared to Trump? Did, did, am I right? Did Trump use the N word last night uh, with Tucker? People kept saying he used the N word, but then people, I don't know what, how is that possible? What does that mean? Like, did well, he really, is that the N word? I mean, I don't know. Because I also saw people saying there's more than one N word. So, like, really? He can't have said that. That would be bigger news. Right. And other news, uh oh, I'm not. <laughs> so, well, oh, hold on, Alex. Can, what? Can we put some space between us? That last conversation piece and t- and bringing in Tim Scott because I was just about to play his commercial and I thought you know what <laughs> let's, let's 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 put some separation between that uh, Anna Kasparian and Alice who's the chick on the Young Turks I'll just ask you where do you think mm-hmm. I am on Ari- Anna Kasparian she's hot because she's crazy correct. I don't think the way that, that it happens crazy. is I know that in in California, at least with the phasing out of gas powered cars, and they'll probably do the same thing with uh, gas stoves is they just ban the sale of any new gas powered cars or any new gas stoves. And so the technology that you have in your home, the gas stove that you have in your home, if it breaks, n- not only are you not able to buy a new one, but it gets increasingly more difficult to just repair it. You get what I'm saying, and so like I that's, get it, but look, that's a bump. That's the normal bumps in the road as you transition to things. I know, bumps but Jake, like, don't minimize the financial burdens associated with these things, okay? No, I'm not Because like I am 
literally freaking the fuck out Whoa. about the charging station thing. I'm like, it's gonna cost. We're gonna Did take they? out a massive fucking loan to pay for damn it. Damn it, Anna. We're not getting any help from the fucking government. God Emma. damn it, dude. And Did you Did you guys ask? Is there any tax credits? <laughs> but I can't. I can't. They get a sideline art. Do I love her more? Yeah, sure. Um, okay, now let's go to Tim Scott, Alice, who is also seemingly running for president. He said, what he said to Tucker is, uh, the biggest problem we have in the whole world, it's not global warming, it's nuclear warming. I call it the N-word. So, yeah, he didn't say that. Okay, here we go. Tim okay. Scott time. On this day, April 12th, 1861, in this harbor, the first shots of the Civil War were fired and our country faced the defining moment. Would we truly be one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all? America's soul was put to the test and we prevailed. Today, our country is once again being tested. Once again, our divisions run deep and the threat to our future is real. Joe Biden and the radical left have chosen a culture of grievance over greatness. They're promoting victimhood instead of personal responsibility, and they're indoctrinating our children to believe we live in an evil country. And all too often, when they get called out for their failures, they weaponize race to divide us, to hold on to their power. When I fought back against their liberal agenda, they called me a prop, a token, because I disrupt their narrative I threaten their control. They know the truth of my life disproves their lies. See, I was raised by a single mother in poverty. The spoons in our apartment were plastic, not silver. But we had faith. We put in the work, and we had an unwavering belief that we, too, could live the American dream. I know America is a land of opportunity, not a land of oppression. I know it because I've lived it. That's why it pains my soul to see the Biden liberals attacking every rung of the ladder that helped me climb. If the radical left gets their way, millions more families will be trapped in failing schools, crime-ridden neighborhoods, and crushing inflation. Not on my watch. This is personal to me. I will never back down in defense of the conservative values that make America exceptional. And that's why I'm announcing my exploratory committee for president of the United States. I will defend the Judeo-Christian foundation our nation is built on and protect- We get it, right? I, yeah, I love Tim Scott. So do I. I just, like, I think he's great. And I think he does a good job. And he doesn't- Give me the like establishment cringe that Nikki mm -hmm. Haley does Correct. with her girl boss. Like when I kick back, I do it in heels or whatever terrible one liners. Like I just like him. I think he's sincere. I think he's really good at his job. I think he'd be a great president. I think this particular cycle, he's maybe running for vice president. Yeah, absolutely. Than president. So who brings you? Who delivers you South Carolina? Tim Scott or Nikki Haley? Tim Scott. You think? Way more. So, yeah, I think so. It's a little tough for, uh, is it Elsie Hastings from, who's the guy from, who's the guy, the senator from uh, South Carolina who gave Biden the state? Not Elsie Hastings. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Yes, you do. I don't know. I don't know this person, but that's okay. Because, I mean, Tim Scott, he's just. Clyburn. Jim Clyburn. Okay, okay. So, but I don't know. I, I just, I think he's better. I think he's more current than Nikki Haley. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, I don't know where his candidacies go. I guess, I mean, if, if Ron DeSantis truly doesn't get in, like you're saying, he's not going to, I tend to think he's still going to get in um, because I think he's thinking your moment is your moment and you just go for it. You know, because right. it doesn't, you don't have, you don't know if four years later you're going to be hot anymore, mm -hmm. you know, and like you go at your hottest time, regardless of what other people right. are doing. So I tend to think he'll still get in. Like, I don't necessarily believe the people who think like, oh, just wait this one out. So much can change in four years. Like, think what a different place 
we're in now than we were in 2020 or how different 2020 was from 2016 in terms of like the politics and who were big names and who wasn't it's you you know what i mean like you can't you can't predict what four years from now will be like totally so i mean i i don't know but if if ron DeSantis truly doesn't get in then i think there is more space for like a tim scott or nikki haley to do well right I, I think more likely Tim Scott than Nikki Haley. But so it'll be interesting to see how does Trump treat Tim Scott during debates. Well, I think right now he's not going to do anything because well, Tim Scott's debates. a non-entity, though, because he's not really competition at the moment. I mean, they're not. Do you think they're really going to put all these people in debates if they're all polling at like zero to one percent? Hmm. That's a good question. Actually. Do you know I think what I mean? There is some like, criteria that, that, that there is a benchmark that they... And I think they've been in recent years, and I think the parties realize this, I think they've been way too lax with the requirements and let way too many people mm-hmm. in. Both parties. You know, I mean, like, yeah. I, I, I think they kind of got burned by the bad press from having, like, Ralph Nader crying outside the debate or whatever stupid things mm-hmm. he was doing back in, like, was that 2000? Maybe. When he was, do you remember when he was like fighting to get into the debates? Yes, and was yes. Like they're keeping yes, me yes. out. Like, yes. Um, but I think all the parties need to like anyone under five percent should just like not be invited because it's so unserious. Um, you know, and and I don't think there's any reason to do it to like put your party through that for what? Like, what's the point? Yeah. And realistically like i know the debates do like change things a bit at the margins but i kind of don't feel like the debates honestly change that much i think i think it it was the um thrusters behind trump's populism was really? him daring to act like that during a phased first debate when megan kelly said you called rosie you know you you said but he you was already them. the front runner though was he by yeah, the first debate he was already he had like thirty five percent or something. Oh, it wasn't or it was Jeb like, at the, the beginning. No, at the beginning he was he was always the front runner from like very from once he actually got in from very very early on. I think from before all the debates. Well, I mean, again, I guess twenty seven people in right. There. So it was like a lot of splitting up the establishment vote. So they kind of kept saying like it's fine. He's not really the front runner. Once a bunch of these people drop out, like then somebody else will surge to the front and it will be fine. And it never happened. He just kept winning states you know what i mean like so you know he kind of basically tied i think ted cruz technically won iowa but he kind of basically tied for iowa maybe like i think it was like ted cruz Rand paul and trump basically like had roughly a third of iowa and then you know and then he took new hampshire and then and then he took south carolina and it just like steamrolled from there but there was no you know, I think I think both the parties have suffered in recent years from having way too many candidates yes. be on the mainstream stage. So I'm trying to look at like who has what right now. So right now the RCP polling average has Trump at 51, DeSantis at 24, and then it has nobody else over five in the polling average. Mm. Pence at 4.9, Haley at 3.9, Cheney at 3.4, Pompeo at 1.3. She was running. Uh, Cheney. Cheney, Lynn? Yeah, Liz Cheney. Liz Cheney. Really? Oh. Or is it no. Um Pompeo one point I mean, this is names that they're putting in the polls. They may not have necessarily announced, but I know she's talked about potentially running, right? Pompeo one point three, Christie one point two, Noam one point two, Ramaswamy point nine, Tim Scott point eight, Yunkin point five, Sununu point five. Mm. Sununu's already said he's not going to, I'm pretty sure, right? Mm. or no did he say he he was thinking about it okay never mind but yeah i mean so if you're the republican party and the republican party by the way right now the rnc is run by trump allies what do you want who do you want in the debates do you know what i'm saying like which of those people do you i mean i guess if you so because it's run by trump allies right so Mm -hmm. what who does trump want to be in the debates with him does he want to be alone on the stage with DeSantis, or does he want a few more people on there? If you're Trump, I think he'd want a few more people. Because, How many more? I mean, like, if, but I think they're going to. Well, yeah, but, out. but the more people you have, all those people are going to go after DeSantis. You want Christie going after DeSantis. You want everybody going after DeSantis. 
Yeah. I mean, Tearing I guess. Apart. Alice, anything to say about this product right here? Um, that is Chelsea Fire Wicked Hot Sauce. It's in a new fancier bottle, but it is still delicious, still hot, still flavorful. You do not have to sacrifice heat or flavor. Uh, you can find it at Market Basket or Big Y or ChelseaFireHotSauce.com. And uh, when you do that, they will also donate 5% of the proceeds from your purchase to the Fallen Firefighters Foundation. So you will be doing good as well while you eat delicious hot sauce. And they bring to us the Chelsea Fire Wicked Hotline Shack chat which tom is about to play i believe it's catching up on shows the past couple days replica and Hi, replica. it's like a show or two ago where it sounded like cyril was mm. maybe using his head as a <laughs> battering ram yes. to correct. try to get into the room <laughs> mm-hmm. that yes, you correct. guys consider a studio mm-hmm. maybe to get a, an ipad or an iphone or some device or just to get at you yeah mostly you just are to get at me Totally accurate, Replica. Mm -hmm. Correct. It made me wonder if there's ever a time that you and Alice are sitting around and there is no there is no children bothering or there's no children needing something. There's no there's no pounding on the door, there's no whining about an iPad. And you guys just look at each other and say to yourselves do you hear that? It's complete silence. <laughs> There's never and a time. Is that a relief to you? Or do you guys think that something's amiss, that something is happening, so you need to go check? Well, we only had one police. Because I imagine it's the, the latter. Yeah, had... if nobody was bothering us for an extended period of time and we were just, a, we would be concerned, I think. Oh, hell yes. Any but... silence would be a problem. <laughs> because we... that never, literally never happens. Yeah, we only had one police visit this week. Yes, yeah, so Cyril called good. the police on us this week and they came to the house. <laughs> yes, yeah, and... so he managed to call 911 from my phone right. and they showed up at the and house. And so what was his was reason? Good. You said he was mad? At... No, no, no. He didn't mean to do it. That's what he says. Yeah. Right. Uh-huh. So, um, by the way, so, so but, Alice gets the worst of it gonna, because they usually she, they, they bother her me. the yeah. most, right? But there is going to be a brief window. So this fall, we are going to send all the kids to the public schools, including Cyril. He's old enough. Yes, he starts kindergarten this year. He can already read, Tom. Ah. <laughs> I don't know if you. I have a compatible reads, relationship with him. He reads chapter books. Wow, I haven't read a chapter <laughs> book. I know, I know, but um, anyway, so. For approximately a month and a half, until we have the new baby, we will have periods of time where there are not kids in That's the house. That's remarkable. Are they civilized enough, the two younger ones, to no. be in school? No, oh. I'm concerned about it, yeah. that they're going to send them home to us again and yeah. say, no, there's been a mistake. No, um, no good. So. Hey, Tom, Steve from Gloucester. I wanted Hi, to give you my condolences on Paige Spiranak unfollowing you from Twitter. This probably had to be one of the darkest moments of your life, and I really hope you're hanging in there. Thank and you, you're Steve. You've taken it one hour and one day at a time Thank because you. having the Queen of Supple unfollow you yep. has to be one of the hottest moments of your life. Take care, my friend. Thank you. I appreciate that. She is supple and she's lovely. And she, yes, she stuck it to me. Daggers. Daggers. And my wife could not be happier. You should have seen the organic joy Alice had yesterday knowing this. That hurts. <laughs> I God. am happy. Ah, you got your comeuppance How's it for feel- calling her fat when she's not fat at all. <sighs> she looks better than me. How dare you call her fat? On advice of Are you my, gonna talk about, my lawyer, I've been told not to comment on this. Are you going to talk about your Awaken 180 results no, today? No, I'm not uh, about that. Mr. Okay. Page Spiritak. What the hell does that mean? I don't mm-hmm. know what that means, and I don't appreciate that whatsoever. Whatsoever. Oh, you call Paige Spiritak fat? Not She's got really. curves, an hourglass figure. She does have curves, an hourglass figure. I don't know that I said the word I don't know you that did. I publicly used the term. Not publicly, <laughs> but you did. You did to somebody on purpose that you were hoping it would get public attention. That's by not sending true. It that is them. not true. I have been talking to Cullinane about her for a long time. But before he ever, he and I used to, I mean, our messages were just private. We've been talking for years, mm. me and Dave, before he was with Kirk. Then this is, I don't know how we got to Spearnack, but, but uh, yes, yes. Maybe she listens to the show, Alice. She's not fat. She's beautiful, okay? Good. 
I'd be pleased if I was on a golf course and there was a tub full of Paige Spiranak and golf balls. I think that was great. <laughs> Gorgeous young lady. She is, Justin. She's curvier now than she was at one point. Okay, that's that's fine. Nobody's hurt here. Can't believe you would say she's fat. Did you make like oink oink noises when you called her fat? No. no. Did you go? Time to go get your fourth plate at the buffet. No, I don't. Come on, Pagey. No. Did you say shit like that? No. Damn it, Justin! Now I gotta cut out swears. You already had to clean up something else. I know, Anna, Anna Gasparian. Gasparian. Hold on, <sighs> hold on. No more swearing. <sighs> I don't know what you're going to do with the mouths. Thank you, Justin. I that know. is a beautiful woman. I know. I know. Can you imagine? I have been viciously sidelined. Alice, just a heads up. If Tom says that it will lighten the financial burden if you take on a roommate, um, don't fall for it. Especially if she has recently been on TV and people are calling her the TJ Maxx bandit. I mean, this person <laughs> definitely got the max for the absolute minimum. Yeah. Beware. That's all I'm saying. Tim, Beware. Tim, bros before hoes. There's a code here, my friend. We will not be inviting the she TJ will Maxx be, bandit indeed. to She will She will need a nanny and she will be joining this household, <laughs> Alice. As I go through the slog of clearing out my burn barrel slog. podcast episodes that I needed to catch up on, the last but not least one begins with a trans podcast commercial. Really? <laughs> I know that you have nothing to do with that, Tom. They play what they play, but I just thought that was pretty uh, appropriate. That's hilarious. And then I listen to the podcast, and I hear nothing. About the Kirk Minahan eight minute wine fest about Jerry Callahan doing absolutely nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. I believe, as someone who comments on that show, as come as somebody that's who is a uh, a listener, a fan. Yeah. I wanted to hear what you had to say about it. I wanted to hear what Alice had to say about it. I wanted to see if you were going to have a backbone. And uh -oh. stand up for Jerry Callahan. I think you're not talking about it. Speaks volumes, pal. Uh-oh. We haven't been called uh. out. Alice K. Shattuck, go ahead. I'll let you step forward. <laughs> you're so brave, Tom. So brave. Um, well, obviously, uh, I differ with Kirk quite a bit on the trans stuff in particular like mm -hmm. i do really really dislike dylan mulvaney and i'm happy to explain mm -hmm. why to him or anyone else anytime i think i've done a lot of that on this show i'm not gonna bore everybody by repeating it all again um personally i think adoption's great i don't know why uh, like i mean kirk also said jerry said other stuff about adoption in the past that led him to like believe i also don't think that's what jerry meant to say when he retweeted that tweet like i don't no. think that was yep. the point of him retweeting that tweet at all agreed i mean like i don't i don't think jerry callahan's anti-adoption that would be like odd to me but i do think sometimes conservatives like don't aren't good at talking about adoption um and the ways that they talk about it can sound like they're devaluing adoption too because i think sometimes they're you know i I just think it's not a great way to talk about it. I think I think adoption is a really, really good thing. I um what I'm not for is the fertility industry and I'm not for buying and selling human children and in particular creating children whose parents have zero like on purpose going out to create children whose parents have zero intention or desire to raise them. I think um, you know, that that that's wrong and actually unethical and part of the reason adoption is such a great and wonderful thing is that it writes a really huge wrong and injustice which is children who've been abandoned or parents can't raise them for some reason mm -hmm. which is sad and a terrible thing but on purpose creating the injustice in order to allow the adoption which the adoption is obviously the good part i think is like a backwards way to deal with it 
you know, so that's why, like, when I talk about the fertility industry, and that's not a thing that's just about gay people either, mm -hmm. by the way, but, like, I think all of that stuff, like surrogacy and test tube babies and stuff, I think is highly unethical and problematic and i have a lot of issues with it in terms specifically of specifically kirk and commoditizing Jerry's... okay commoditizing the human body in particular mm -hmm. the female body and in and human children which i think is wrong children aren't a commodity to be bought or sold you know i i, right. I don't think it's right and so and that that comes down to my issues i also think and i know this position is controversial now though it hasn't been in the past i also think that mothers and fathers are both really important to the development of the human child and that all things being equal it's better for kids to have both which is right um you know it's not a reflection on anybody's parenting you can be an awesome parent and be a single mother but that doesn't mean it wouldn't be good for your kids to have their father in their lives. You know, you can be sure. an awesome parent and be gay moms together. I mean, like, I know gay moms. They obviously can be parents for a variety of reasons. You mm -hmm. know, like, you, they might have previously been in a relationship with someone of the opposite sex and have children from that. They might, they might have children for different reasons, right? But, like, obviously gay people can be parents and they can be awesome parents. But by necessity... A gay couple raising a child that child will not have either a mother or a father in their lives which is i think not ideal that's what, what my do you idea. mean well i'm saying you mean a biological mother or father in their lives no i'm saying that if two dads are raising you then you don't have a mom i mean one can assume some roles of a mom it, it... i think that moms and dads both fulfill important developmental roles for children. Sure. I mean, and it, not to it, say, it, it, it's not to, like I say, it's not to reflect on anybody's parenting. You can be a great dad, but it still doesn't make you yeah, a mom. Yeah, but, you know, there's a lot of moms and dads who just suck as parents. Yeah, so that's I'll take, true, if, too. I'll take the gay couple every day of the week if they're, if they're committed to it. Absolutely no lesbian There are couple. a lot of parents that suck at parenting, yeah. and there's a lot of parents that are great parents that happen to be same-sex parents, too, mm -hmm. right? So... I mean, that that's all very true. But I think going out and, and I'm not trying to judge anybody's situation. Like I say, there are a variety of reasons why a gay couple might have children in their lives. And I am not privy. I'm not part of their private lives mm -hmm. to know that they haven't asked me my opinion on it. I'm not their spiritual advisor or their doctor or something. Right. right. But in general, I'm comfortable to make the general, although controversial nowadays statement that I think all things being equal it's good for kids to have a mom and good for kids to have a dad okay i mean like that's okay blanket statement i think that that's true in general okay so replica my feeling on this was um yeah yesterday i thought about it during my second walk which doesn't seem to matter because i'm getting weight so or, um uh, and i Can't thought I th outrun your diet that's yeah. what they say and i thought about this I thought um, since it was so – Kirk was so personal and personally offended and seemed to represent some stu other stuff that Jerry had said, like you said, that this was about, like, bad blood between them that I, that I don't know enough about and, and that, that he – Kirk seemed hurt and angry and, and effing offended yesterday. And I love Jerry. And I like Kirk too, and so I thought this this seems to be um, a vitriol that is that is um, happening within them that is a pure vitriol that has to do with other things. Uh, you know, it's it's a it's a it, the a relationship where where it didn't make any sense for me to get into it because it wasn't like hey, other stuff I'd get into, mm -hmm. but this seemed to be a, a emotional. Um, sword fight going on between those two guys now i will say this that i don't think jerry said anything bad i think kirk read, read into it something bad which might be experiences he had with jerry who knows you know he kind of hinted at it i thought turtle boy's call to um to kirk today was great i thought he was right on about everything i do think uh i do think that um that parents who adopt can love their adopted kids just as much as their biological kids and oh, do and I do all not. the time. And as a matter of fact, just thinking about it, 
fathers love their kids all the time. And unless they've had paternity tests, a lot of times they don't even know if they're <laughs> No, I mean, you can't I, be sure if it's your kid. I mean, so I think for, adoption's a really good thing. And I think oh, adoptive totally, parents totally. are totally. real parents. Oh, absolutely. I mean, like, I, I think that's absolutely well, Yeah, true. and I also think that, 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 you know, I think that Kirk had mentioned before that he had gone through trying to get a adopted kid and, like, it had fallen through at least once, maybe more. And I can't imagine what that does, one, to a relationship – with mm -hmm. your wife, and two, just the ups and downs of that must be a freaking, just yeah. a, a, a heartbreaking infant adoption nightmare. Especially, I infant adoption yeah. especially is incredibly, right. incredibly difficult, There is, no, which is why the fertility industry exists. Right. It's extremely expensive. A lot more people want to adopt infants than there are infants oh, yeah. to go around, um, unless you do international, which I believe is like even more expensive. Yeah. I don't know as much about that. The children that are waiting in foster care are not right. infants whose yeah. parents want to give them up. That's another heartbreaking story. They're like, yeah. I mean, that's a whole nother sad thing. That's like kids that are older kids that right. that you know, a lot of times their parents are still alive and want to maintain a relationship with the child, even when you adopt them because, right. and the parents have very, very There's severe a lot of, problems. Yeah. A lot of problems in there. So I so mean, that's, in prison, yeah. a lot of drugs, a lot of like, so, scary uh, things. so, so replica, I am not, uh, I am on team, um, Gaines, uh, Riley Gaines or Gates. What is it? Riley Gaines. Gaines. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, I, if she said, I don't think she said. I, don't I think even... it would have been a better worded tweet if she had said that Megan Rapinoe doesn't have any daughters to stand up for currently, because that would be an accurate tweet. Not that she can't have daughters, because that's right. Well, not an accurate. But she tweet. also qualified even if... it with another word in there. It's somewhere. No, right, she like Riley deleted Gaines. the tweet and Kirk said called, like probably or Kirk, whatever. Kirk yeah. called her a c word. I think Riley Gaines is a 22 year old kid who's doing a pretty good thing. And I've got no problem with that. I don't think Jerry would. I don't know though. It sounds like like I don't know that these guys have gone at each other in pretty vicious ways. But well, I mean, and it I sounds like... like it also relates to past things that Jerry has said that you and I have not heard. So right, it's kind of hard to so, weigh in on that piece of it. So um, yeah, there. You, so there you go. I, I do. Uh, so once again, I do believe that uh, that adoptive parents who adopt love their kids just as much as parents who don't. Uh, who it's biological. I think that you you bond, but with... I also don't think if you asked Riley Gaines, our adoptive parents, good parents, or real parents, like I don't think she would say no to that. Like oh, I knows, do not think that was the intention of the tweet. So there you go, Replica. You got to get a lot of mileage out of that one. It's essentially the last. <laughs> I mean, yeah, a lot part of, of the show. Back to Justin. So my dad always told me, um, "Think with your head, not uh, with your other." Right, and. Uh, more times than not than that. That's true, but I did the polar opposite more times than, than not. Right. And he would also said, Don't don't get with women who are crazy. Oh, he's wrong. And uh those are the ones who usually are incredible in bed. Correct. <laughs> Damn straight, my friend. I thought you said I was good in bed. Uh, <laughs> let's go to the next one. Replica back. So Tim and Kenton spot on WTIC was so good, so important, so groundbreaking, such a must listen to mm -hmm. that we suffered. Yeah. Through all of that. Oh, oh, one sec. Oh, fast forward. Oh, one sec. <laughs> oh, fast. Uh, I promise it's going to land. Oh, oh, oh. And then. When Tim and Kenton's spot actually played, you just fast forward through spots again. So we didn't even get the whole conversation. Did I not? That was so important. So well, such it was a his, must listen. It was his take. You fast forward through it once you actually oh, got to it. It was Tim's take. Which was, Amazing. What was the take on again? Amazing. It was Thank about you. Bud Light. Right, it was his take. It's mm -hmm. saying that it was a good marketing decision, et cetera, which mm -hmm. is what he said on the air. And I've well, seen hold on, okay. I, I, I say. Um, that is a technical thing. If you want to know, I had I rolled on that during a commercial, it, during my my show, in Adobe Edition. Now I also record the show in Adobe Edition, so I couldn't open a file that was sitting there 
while I was recording, so I forgot to save it. That was what, what that was all about. Hi, Steve from Merrimack. Hey, Steve. You know hey, what Steve. I love? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> I love getting in the car in the morning and turning on the Burn Barrel podcast from the night before and getting 17 uninterrupted minutes of abortion talk. <laughs> Jackpot! My day is made. It's so fun. You know? I love hearing that stuff. I am and complete. maybe we could broaden it. Maybe we could get the Holocaust and maybe the Armenian <laughs> Genocide of the 1915 or whatever the hell it was. Uh, just, you know, looking for show topics. <laughs> anyway, thank you. <laughs> That was, Al- time. that was Alice Shattuck. That's a passion point of hers, as a matter of fact. I believe fact. I was asked to fill on topics. Um, thank you so much for listening. Great Shot Chat messages today. Appreciated everybody. Um, loved the Shot Chat today. Everybody was great. You can leave messages for that at burnbarrelpodcast.com. That's also where you can find all different places to listen to the show, wherever you like to listen to podcasts. If you want to join live streams and the live chat and stuff like that and get a little bit of extra content, that's at patreon.com slash burn barrel. Um, and you can follow us on Twitter at burn. Say la pee. Sorry. One.